Hi, my name is Ricky Patel. I'm a graduate student in Tom Cronin's lab at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I work with mantis shrimp. These predatory crustaceans are best known for their powerful strikes and their complex visual systems. Mantis shrimp are mostly found in shallow tropical waters, such as here, off of the coast of the Florida Keys, a chain of islands that extend off the tip of Florida into the Caribbean. In these shallow waters, mantis shrimp of the species Neogonodactylus oristidae occupy small holes in rocks, coral, and sponges for use as burrows. In these refuges, they spend most of their day safely concealed from their predators. Despite the safety that these burrows offer, mantis shrimp will regularly make excursions of up to a few meters away from their homes for tasks such as foraging. They invariably will turn around and will reliably return to their homes. These observations led my co-author and I to ask the question, how do mantis shrimp return to their burrows after foraging excursions? To begin to investigate the navigational abilities of mantis shrimp, I built large semi-natural arenas with a hidden burrow and food placed in a few fixed locations in the arena. We found that mantis shrimp would leave their homes, making fairly tortuous paths to the location of the food placed in the arena. Once animals located the food, they would typically make fairly straight paths to or near the location of the burrow. If their homeward paths did not lead them directly to their burrows, they would initiate a search behavior for their lost homes. We hypothesized that our mantis shrimp were able to locate their hidden homes using a navigational strategy called path integration. During path integration, an animal keeps track of the directions and distances it travels from a given location in our case, the mantis shrimp's home burrow, using a biological compass and an odometer. From this information, a home vector, the most direct path to the starting location, is continually updated, allowing the animal to return to its starting location at any point in the journey. To test if mantis shrimp were using path integration to return home, we displaced the mantis shrimp to a new location in the arena once they had found food placed on a track. If displaced mantis shrimp oriented their homeward paths parallel to those of animals that had not been displaced, this would indicate that they were using path integration to navigate home. During our experiments, we found that mantis shrimp did indeed orient their homeward paths as expected by navigation using path integration, demonstrating that mantis shrimp use path integration to navigate to their home burrows. Since path integration requires that an animal possess a biological compass with which to orient, we next investigated which sensory cues Neogonodactylus oristidae use as compass cues for orientation. Mantis shrimp could potentially use a number of varied cues for orientation underwater. In order to narrow down the possible cues they use, we built a rotatable platform that was centered in large arenas placed outdoors under open skies. Once animals found food placed on the platform, we slowly rotated them 180 degrees. If animals oriented in the direction of their homes despite their rotation, we could conclude that they used allothetic cues, or those external to the body for orientation. If animals oriented away from their homes after being rotated, we could determine that they used idiothetic cues, or cues anchored internal to the body for orientation. We found that after being rotated 180 degrees under days with clear skies or partly cloudy skies when the sun was hidden by clouds, mantis shrimp correctly oriented home despite being rotated 180 degrees. However, under heavily overcast skies, mantis shrimp oriented approximately in the opposite direction of their homes. This indicated that mantis shrimp used celestial cues for orientation when available and rely on idiothetic cues when celestial cues are obscured. Since the sun is the dominant feature in the daytime sky, we tested if mantis shrimp used the sun as a compass to orient by blocking the sun with the board and mirroring the sun to make it appear as if the sun was in the opposite side of the sky to a mantis shrimp in the arena. During this condition, 
If mantis shrimp use the sun for orientation during path integration, they should orient their homeward paths in the opposite direction of their burrows. We found that when the sun was blocked and mirrored in this manner, mantis shrimp would most often orient their homeward paths away from their homes, demonstrating that they indeed use the sun for orientation. Since mantis shrimp were able to orient correctly home under skies in which the sun was blocked by clouds, but patches of blue sky were still visible, they appeared to use celestial information other than the sun for orientation. We hypothesized that they were using celestial polarization patterns caused by the scattering of sunlight in the Earth's atmosphere under these conditions. To test this hypothesis, I built indoor arenas that were carefully designed to create a homogeneous environment with an artificial polarized light pattern displayed over the arena. When animals found food placed in the center of the arena, the polarization pattern was rotated 90 degrees. If mantis shrimp used overhead polarization patterns for orientation, they should orient their homeward paths perpendicular to the direction of their burrows. Under this condition, we found that mantis shrimp did indeed orient their homeward paths perpendicular to their burrows, demonstrating that they use overhead polarization patterns viewed through the water's surface for orientation. From our experiments, we can propose a hierarchy of orientation cues the Ogonodactylus oristidae relies upon during path integration. First, the sun seems to be the primary orientation cue these animals use to orient. Next, mantis shrimp rely on celestial polarization patterns and potentially other celestial cues for orientation. Finally, these animals appear to rely on idiothetic information to orient when celestial cues are absent, allowing for a robust navigation strategy in an aquatic environment.